One. Well, I was lucky enough to see Ghostbusters Afterlife. And I say lucky because after being locked in forever, Australia's gone back to living in the 80s where we'd get films months after they were released in the US. Keep up the good work, son. Workaholic. And to think, it was only a couple of years ago that we got to see films before everyone. Go to that midnight screening, you'd have a full day ahead of the rest of the world. Which means here in Australia, we've had to live with Ghostbusters 2016 for a day longer than anywhere else. And I'm telling you, no one deserves that. Is this true? Yes, it's true. Now, after Ghostbusters 2016, I wasn't originally that keen to see Ghostbusters Afterlife. I know everyone was super excited that the original cast was coming back, but they seem to forget that the original cast came back for the 2016 version too. Dan Aykroyd hasn't been known for his great decisions in his later career, and I think he'd do anything for a buck. There really. was a, the one with all girls. A great film. And really then, good film. Those girls were superb. But the first couple of trailers did look promising. I like season one of Stranger Things, so it looked like it was going to be like that with some ghosts thrown in. Then I started seeing online that it was actually quite good. So when the opportunity came up, I thought, why not? And I'm glad it did. I was starting to think Hollywood couldn't make fun films anymore unless they were just over the top stupid but ghostbusters afterlife really has the feel of a good 80s film now for those that don't know this ghostbusters movie was written and directed by jason reitman who's the son of ivan reitman who made the original ghostbusters now making more ghostbusters films was always going to be a problem because that first one's catching lightning in a bottle a heap of elements came together that shouldn't have worked but somehow by a miracle they did the ever-changing script and unfinished special effects should have really undone that film and it is pg oh, i'm fucking telling you it's pg but somehow ivan reitman and all the original cast pulled off a miracle and made one of the most loved films of all time we came, we saw, we kicked its ass. You now, Dan Aykroyd started all this ghost busting when he came up with the original story and script. Well, Dan Aykroyd seemed to write a horrible film, and then Harold Ramis fixed it. You're very handy, I can tell. And Bill Murray, well, he just wrote his own script as he went along. So any attempt to recreate that magic and miracle would surely end in disaster, which the fucking 2016 version proved. My God, that film is fucking terrible. Perhaps the greatest comedy motion picture of all time. This is going to make E.T. look like Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is going to be the kind of thing that you're going to, your, your children are going to say, Dad, I can look up to you now, and I never could before. Isn't it worth it? The only Ghostbusters. Even by the time Ghostbusters 2 came along, the polish was starting to wear off. But luckily, Jason Reitman had the balls to give it a go. And it paid off. This film actually gives us a great example of how to introduce new characters without taking a big shit on all the old characters. And I'm not afraid to see old people in movies. But of course, it depends how it's handled. Because no one, no one wants to see another Indiana Jones movie. And we probably won't because they're trying their hardest to kill Harrison Ford while they're making it anyway. We're gonna die! Not yet! Now, while watching the film, I was struck by how well they handled the old cast. It also struck me how similar Egon's character was to Luke Skywalker, because we can never talk about that too much. And of course, look out for the spoilers! spoilers! Yes, Egon and Luke are very similar. They're both living as hermits. Both have given up on having loved ones and friends around them, and both die and come back as Force ghosts. So it was hard for me to not compare the two characters, because they couldn't be handled any more fucking differently. Because after watching Ghostbusters Afterlife, Egon comes out a bigger hero than bloody Luke Skywalker, and I would have never seen that coming. And add to this, the person that plays Luke Skywalker is still alive. Harold Ramis is already sadly dead, and his character still has a bigger impact than Luke Skywalker had on the new Star Wars series. So with Harold Ramis being dead, I was interested to see how they'd introduce him. I was interested to see if he'd make an appearance in the film at all, or if he'd just be referred to as dead. But not only does he make an appearance, he's one of the main characters who has the biggest influence on the whole story. My father died. Relax, I didn't even know him. I'm surprised he left me anything. Sounds like my father. Yeah? Did your dad uh, abandon your family and move to a farm in the middle of nowhere? Now, there's a lot to like about this film. It has a good cast. Even the little kid that's an amalgamation of the fat kid and the Asian kid from the Goonies doesn't get annoying, which really surprised me, because I was sure I was going to hate that kid. He didn't hit it. He destroyed it. 
it. It's shot beautifully, and it really does catch that 80s feel. And I think the script does an amazing job in moving the story forward while still honouring the past. It feels like a fitting sequel, unlike that piece of shit 2016 film. Come on. But back to comparing our heroes, where Jason Reitman obviously loves the character of Egon and the work his dad did in the original films. You sense that he doesn't let his ego get in his way and have to stamp his own personality onto the fucking film like some little chubby prick. He understands the difference between a personal one-off project and working within an existing franchise that's loved by millions. Normally when you make a film, you, you own it. And then when it's released, it's not yours anymore and it belongs to everyone else. This is the first time I've made a movie in which it never belonged to me in the first place. All day we would sit here writing the movie, listening to tour groups come and talk <laughs> about Ecto-1 and take photos with Ecto-1. And it was this constant reminder. That's right, this is who we're making the movie right. for. There's a relationship with this iconography. People love this car. We have to make a movie that's gonna make them happy. We gotta think about the fans. And he said no. So when we meet Egon, he's living as a hermit, like Luke was. But unlike Luke, Egon's doing it to be a hero. He's doing it to save the world. He left his family and everyone he loved to live a lonely life with no friends and no loved ones. Well, except for one loved one that drops in occasionally. I'm sure they had some very clean economic sex. Though Egon was known to slightly exaggerate the size of his penis. 35 feet long, weighing approximately 600 pounds. <coughs> That's a big Twinkie. Yes, he left everyone he loved to protect them and fight the evil on his own. Unlike Luke Skywalker, who ran away from his problems and was hiding why millions of people died like a selfish asshole. Egon's decided to live on his own because he found out the gates of hell were trying to open up and destroy the human race. Egon didn't run from the battle, he ran to it. Egon sacrificed everything for the people he loved. Luke did it because the baddies were coming back. I think what? I'm going to walk out with a laser sword and face down the whole First Order. Well, Egon might not have a laser sword, but he has a ghost trap and some huge fucking balls. And let's not forget, after years of waiting and finally getting a new Star Wars film, it took us two hours and 15 minutes to see 30 fucking seconds of Luke Skywalker, who did fuck all. Not to mention when he did do something, it was fucking stupid. In Ghostbusters Afterlife, the first person we meet is Egon. And within five minutes, we understand that he's a hero and still fighting evil. In the Star Wars sequels, Luke made a fucking flash appearance in the first film, was a loser in the second film, and came back as a fucking useless force ghost in the third film to try and fill in some fucking huge plot holes. I was wrong, you're a Palpatine. In Afterlife, Egon is a main character that drives the story and is super important, even though, like the rest of the original cast, Egon's hardly in the film. Bill Murray has about three minutes of screen time. Sigourney has about 30 seconds. This film proves once again what we've all been saying all along. Expecting original characters in a franchise to be written in a consistent and respectful way doesn't equal us expecting them to be the leads for two hours. We understand they're older. That doesn't mean they can't be heroes and influential on the story. And even though Egon drives the story, the whole film revolves around the new cast and their actions. And this is what a lot of these Twitter idiots that possess zero creativity don't understand. You can have the new, cool, good-looking cast, as well as showing love for the old cast. Yeah, I mean, we're all pretty dang special down here. And luckily we have the new cast because when Bill Murray turns up, he looks like he's about to fucking die. But to be fair, he looked pretty close to death at the original film too. Unlike Sigourney Weaver and Ernie Hudson, those two have hardly fucking changed. Though I do wish Rick Moranis had made an appearance because I'd be up for a Louis Tully film. Okay, who brought the dog? Also, when Egon comes back as a ghost, he's bloody useful. Unlike this bastard. See, where Ghostbusters have always shown that ghosts can interact with the real world, when he comes back, it makes sense that he helps out. And, you know, actually defeats the enemy where Disney completely fucked up was by showing force ghosts interacting with the real world which just made everyone question why don't they come and fucking help like Egon does and that's the difference because in this film they care about the fucking story and it making sense and instead of coming back as a force ghost to this person that Luke actually hardly knows Egon reconnects with his own daughter which actually means something and then they just start riffing off each other. They are like a band and they just need a moment to warm up and then all of a sudden they're playing. That's incredible. Yeah, and, and it felt incredible. I don't care anymore on that level because Han Solo is gone, Luke is gone, and you just can't get the band back together the way you wanted it to be. But what would I know? Because somehow the professional critics rate this lower than the 2016 version, which goes to show Rotten Tomatoes is a fucking joke. <laughs> So in all seriousness, Ghostbusters Afterlife did a wonderful job turning the brainy, everyone's third favourite character of the original series into the true hero of the story. A man that sacrificed everything for others. Egon is somehow now braver than the guy that took on Vader. Ah, thanks Disney.
So yes, Hollywood can make a good film if the children of the original creators are involved and not a bunch of fucking dickheads. Two hermits that die and come back as false ghosts. But only one's a hero. Only one has a reason to be out on his own. Only one does something heroic. And only one shows that family and friends come first. The other's just a whinge and prick that died on a rock. Go away. On the count of three. Go on two, one, 